So thanks everybody for coming. A little about the webinar series. This is the second season of our webinar series, and this is the first uh, webinar in that second season. The series offers talks by speakers on different topics related to costumes and costuming. It's free to Silicon Web members and may also be available to the greater costume community as we have space on the Zoom platform. If you have feedback or suggestions for future speakers or topics, uh, please send them to board at siwcostumers.org with the subject line webinars, and we'll be glad to take your suggestions and comments. We want to acknowledge the International Costumers Guild, Marty Gear Costuming Arts and Science Funds for a grant that helped us get the webinar series started. And we also want to thank the ICG for making its Zoom platform available to chapters and special interest groups. This recording, by the way, will be available uh, afterwards. A couple notes on Zoom. If you could please set or leave your video and audio controls on mute. That will cut down on background noise, and it'll also help us manage bandwidth as well. So if you could do that, we would appreciate it. Feel free to chat or react during the presentation using the chat feature in Zoom. There'll be a QA period after the presentation. To ask a question anytime during the presentation, type it into the chat window and label it as Q&A. We'll get to the questions as we have a chance. When the webinar is over, please complete a brief survey on your experience. We use those results to help improve future webinars, so we'll appreciate it if you could do that. A little about the speaker. Uh, Richard Mann is a Hugo Award-nominated photographer who's widely known for his work photographing customers at sci-fi fantasy conventions. In 2015, he began a project that he calls World Builders of Science Fiction and Fantasy. And his goal was to photograph science fiction and fantasy genre creators, including writers, artists, and occasionally editors, using traditional large format four inch by five inch film cameras. Uh, this process captures the essence of the person in front of the camera, a picture essentially that tells a thousand word story. There's a limited preview release of his World Builders photo book volume one that was released in 2022, and he'll have a final market version that he plans to release by the end of 2023. He's a finalist for the Best Fan Artist Hugo Award at the 2023 Worldcon in Chengdu, China in October 2023. His finalist package is available on his website, and I've given you the URL here in case you want to go look at it. Richard thinks he's the first photographer ever nominated for this particular award. Voting is open to Worldcon members now through September 30th. If you are a Worldcon member and you haven't voted yet, uh, you're eligible to do that. Uh, take a look and vote for any number of Hugo Awards, including Best Fan Artist. Richard's also been photographing portraits of costumes with similar setups and intent. He plans to publish a volume of these photographs in 2024 as cosplay transformations. In addition to his photography work, Richard's also served as president of the Silicon Web Costumers Guild, and he's published articles on photography in the Virtual Costumer Magazine. So with that, Richard, take it away. So first of all, thank you for joining the webinar. And I'm sorry, I was I was checking the date for uh, the Hugo nomination, actually. Um, we'll double check that later on. So um, in this webinar, I'm going to present two projects, mainly two projects called World Builders of Science Fiction and Fantasy and um, For the Love of the Art, which is a rename for the transformation cosplay. And my tagline is, uh, some people drive, we're driven. So I think all photographers have some kind of, a, well, all artists and craftsperson and customer, et cetera, has some drive in us and um, we just need to create. And I'm sure all of you can understand that drive. So just a brief bio. Uh, I grew up in Hong Kong and I uh, read a lot of uh, manga and anime 
and uh, what we call the wuxia martial art novels. You know, after immigrating to U.S., I discovered science fiction and fantasy. Um, the first book I tried to read is such a Lord of Rings, which is way beyond my reading uh, vocabulary level. So I gave it up and I asked my friend, what, what should I read? And they said, Foundation Trinity. Um, that was wonderful introduction. Uh, especially in the early day, my, uh, my English wasn't so good. So uh, reading character is a bit you know, difficult, but uh, reading plot, twist, and, and things like the Foundation, and, and Arthur C. Clarke and uh, Larry Liffin, et cetera, are just perfect. They're, they're so uh, uh, you know, science, uh, plot um, heavy. It was great. And then uh, I met my uh, future wife at college, and then uh, you know we started to we we joined a <laughs> uh, university science fiction club. I think we have uh, the founding members. Uh, we found a leaf note, uh, note on the on the ground one day on the <laughs> on the campus, and uh, that's you know the the president was advertising the club. Anyway, then we started to go to Boston and. Uh, we start with Arisha one, um, and uh, and it was great. This is during the eighties, mid to late eighties, and in the East Coast, um, um, like really, you know, world class artists like Michael Wellens and Don Mays, etc., were Bob Eggenston. They 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 uh, frequently exhibited the regional convention at Boston and Arisha, so. And then, uh, you know, um, we moved to California and uh, started to photograph anime conventions and, you know, because my wife and kids uh, are customers. And then I started, you know, uh, helping out with the masquerade at WorldCon and Hugo's Award. So, and here we are. Um, I'm going to send this uh, PDF file, the presentation to uh, Phil. And uh, he he will he could uh, put it up as part of the uh, uh, materials for the webinar. So here's some link: my website, my email, phone number, and links to my projects, and also link to the Hugo packet. So um, one one thing I was going to check was uh, when does the voting end? Um, I think it may be October 10th, but uh, feels like September 30th. So we should, you know, I will double check and, uh, you know, um, make sure that uh, we got the right date. Um, the awards itself will be announced on October 18 to 22, Shantu Wakan. And to vote, you only need a WISFUS membership. If you voted for site selection at this con, uh, the DC Wakan, you are already a WISFUS member. So you don't have to get uh, additional membership, but if you are not, you uh, you could purchase a WISFUS membership for fifty dollars, and then you could attend the uh, virtual uh, conference for ex uh, additional ten dollars. By the way, uh, for WorldCon, another major things that happened at WorldCon besides the Hugo is the site selection. Um, twenty twenty five will be selected, and right now. Um, uh, Seattle and um, I forgot another country uh, are the you know uh, uh, in the in the uh, list. So uh, to vote for site selection, you have to pay additional fifty dollars for the site selection fee. Anyway, I'm one of five finalists in the best fan artist category, and as Phil said, I believe I'm the first uh, photographer to be nominated. So before we start. <laughs> These projects are expensive. Um, I have to thank the International Customers Guild, the Silicon Web, Arishie, and many, many people uh, for generous uh, emotional and monetary financial support. Uh, some of you, some of them are here. Um, so thank you, thank you. The projects are ongoing, and I will talk about, in fact, the book uh, project later. As mentioned, it costs seven to nine dollars now. The the price uh, prices keep going up. So if you are able to, I will appreciate any support. So why do I take portraits with this large format camera? 
first of all, portraits is arguably one of the most difficult subjects um, in photography, uh, even with any camera. So, I mean, you, <laughs> you basically walk up to strangers and, and ask them to give you five to 15 minutes of their time, especially with a large format camera. Um, and, um, you know, um, a lot of times people say no. Uh, and you have to take that rejection not personally. And a lot of times when you even they give you the time and you do everything you can, you mess up. <laughs> the photos don't come out right because the large format camera is all manual uh, operation and it's just very fiddly. If you have seen me work, you 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 know what I meant. There are many ways to screw it up. And uh, sometimes, uh, and 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 I wouldn't know how the photo uh, comes out until I process it later, uh, which could be days or weeks, and then scanned. And then uh, sometimes I need to track down the subject uh, to do retake. The sad fact with that is sometimes a uh, unfortunate, so, uh, especially with some of the you know science fiction uh, author that uh, uh, editor that uh, you know um, older. Um, unfortunately, some of them you know pass away in between, or they may pass away before I could actually get to them. So there are few uh, authors I actually uh, try to um, track down in the next few months, if possible. You know, usually I only take two photos <laughs> per session, um, and uh, sometimes something just not quite right. Maybe maybe the backdrop is showing or whatever. So I will. I'm not ashamed to use Photoshop to uh, do um, editing to rescue photos. But my uh, operation uh, uh, mentality is that I'm not doing AI or digital painting. I'm just trying to fix um, what would have been the picture if I didn't screw things up. And sometimes, you know, the lighting is a little bit bad or maybe the person, you know, just didn't have the best day or whatever. So, but anyway, we'll, we'll see what we can get, right? So why do I do it? It's really gratifying. If I do it right, basically I'm capturing the essence of a person in one thirtieth of a second, most of the time. Sometimes it's faster, sometimes it's slower. Um, four by five film gives amazing image quality. Um, I could get an equivalent digital camera, but that would cost 10 to $30,000. And um, because it takes time, I keep the uh, subjects engaged, so I talk to them, um, and you know, build a certain type of report with the subject and get to know them a little bit better. Everyone has a story to tell, and paradoxically, even though you know they wait five to ten minutes, and then uh, I'd ask them to basically not move for at least um, you know ten to thirty seconds while I focus and all that, they actually seem to be more relaxed in in these photos. Um, I th have a theory why, but um, you know, I, th I think just the fact that you know, I asked them to um, post naturally. I'm not doing uh, you know authors headshots or anything like that. So I want to bring out their personality. So why did I start the project cosplay transformation slash for the love of the art? Well, as mentioned, my wife. Uh, and daughters are customers. She, uh, my wife, uh, Carisu, whom many of you also know, um, started costuming when, you know, <laughs> like a lot of you, uh, as a teenager or earlier, she make uh, you know, Princess Leia's costume, et cetera, type of thing. Um, so I'm like, what do I do? You know, hanging around in anime convention and, whatever. Um, so I start taking photos and then I start doing official photo. And then I've, um, the, the book Custom Makers Art is definitely inspiration. And original, the project I was going to take, uh, and the reason is called transformation, just I was going to take pictures of uh, customers in costume, and, but also in the, um, you know, uh, civic clothes. Um, but I think after taking <laughs> well over many hundreds of photos. I think there are values in um, in just the customing photos. So we we'll see the book may include some because I have taken some, uh, you know, our custom photos. Um, we'll see how it goes. 
The project started in 2014, and I have a large print exhibition at CC33 in uh, Charleston. CC, I mean, 36, not 26 here, in uh, San Diego, and also in WorldCon San Jose. Um, so anyway, here's the uh, his uh, inspiration book. Um, you can still get it um, from Amazon and other places. Amazon says uh, <laughs> published in 1899, which obviously is not true. You could usually, the paperback, you could usually get for less than $68. So in here, that's $15 or so. So, um, so this is one of the first photo I took of the, um, for the project. And um, I think, you know, taking photos like this really, really hooked me um, because at first I wasn't sure I want to continue the, the project with, um, with large format film because it's expensive. Uh, but just the clarity and the detail. I actually send uh, two photos to be drum scanned uh, for people that don't know drum scanning is basically the highest quality scanning that you could do with film. And the uh, I print this one, I print several pictures up to like six feet, five to six feet anyway. And you, you, you cannot see grain or anything. I mean, it's just fabulous, amazing. Um, and this part of the costume, um, the maker is called Travis. And the wing, um, when it's fully spread out, is about 12 feet. Uh, it's extremely heavy. I think it's about 40 pounds, maybe even heavier with the batteries and, and, and wings. And uh, it's fully articulated. I think if he do it again, he could probably uh, use newer material or other method to uh, cut down on the weight. Um, anyway, he uh, I took the photo in 2015 and he already spent like three years prior to that um, prototyping. And he was just about to give up because, you know, it was just so difficult to do. Um, I'm sure a lot of the customers here can, uh, can appreciate that. And uh, mom, who was on the wheelchair, uh, told him, you know, he, he said, well, I'm about to give up. He said, Travis, you, you are not wasting your time or money. You, you are about to succeed. So he spent uh, another six months or so perfecting it. And he won uh, Best in Show uh, in 2015 Anime LA. It's just amazing to, to, to watch. And it really a joy to see, see them together. That's, that's another thing that we really enjoy doing the project. It's to, it's the interaction with a customer or the authors or artist. Um, you learn a little bit more about them and uh, you really, you appreciate their focus and drive. So this is how I look. <laughs> um, I think I'm pretty sure I'm taking a photo of Nora in this photo here at the CC3. And uh, if you see me working, feel free to photograph me or the camera or whatever. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those, I don't mind chit-chatting <laughs> because the process takes so long. Chit-chatting chit while I work is actually, you know, keep, keep, keep me engaged. So why do I do, want, to, want to do this project? In the end, you guys, the customers, cosplay, you spend a lot of effort heart and soul into your crafts and art. So I, I feel like it's only proper that some of this amazing, amazing work be captured. And I believe anyone can cosplay or costume, uh, regardless age. Uh, it, uh, I know someone, um, um, uh, I forgot his name in Atlanta. He's a black cosplayer and he cosplay Aragon and other thing, more power to him. Um, Tolkien never said the race of the uh, people anyway, right, in, in the book. Uh, but anyway, anyone should be able to cosplay or costume regardless of age, race, gender, or body types. And that's why I'm doing this. I know a lot of people take photos of uh, special anime cosplayers, but I think uh, most of them do tend toward, you know, the, uh, the more flashy cosplayer. So here's another picture of me working at uh, San Diego. 
Kasim Khan. And you can see on the back here that I have the large print exhibit. Um, some of, most of them are 24 by 30, I think. So, um, speaking of custom makers art, um, Jennifer and I, um, you know, I, I forgot that I photographed them uh, as Arwen in 2005. Phil and Ka uh, Kathy, I think that's the same years you guys were doing the Law of the Rings. Anyway, and uh, my photo of, of them was uh, one of the favorite photos. So, but anyway, uh, later on when I was doing the project, I contacted uh, them and uh, we, we just have so many plans. Unfortunately, they passed away during the pandemic. Um, but we found uh, just a few months ago, two, three months ago, we found a copy of the Castle Makers Art at a used bookstore in Santa Rosa. And um, it's signed by uh, Jennifer with her, uh, with that tagline, strange to be so silent web. So I call it message from a ghost. It's really too bad. At 2018 at uh, Custom Card 36, I did a catalog quality book of the work in progress as a, uh, you know, just to demonstrate, to show people some of the photos. And, uh, uh, you know, I think I make like five bucks per book type of thing. Um, you can still get it from blur.com and I'm working on a high quality book, um, 2024, 2025. Uh, I will talk more about that later. So world builders of science fiction and fantasy. So I started the uh, transformation cosplay in 2014 and then 2015 and 2014, I started to uh, photograph um, the uh, uh, Nebula in addition to Hugo's when, 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 when I could attend the work on. Uh, so it's kind of natural that I, um, you know, start doing the project with the world builders and the Nebula people are just amazing. They were accommodating. They give me a room to exhibit and to do my project. So a lot of the photos from the from on this project is from uh, is taken during nebulas. It's a, actually a little bit easier to take the photos at the nebulas rather than at Worldcon because first of all, um, Worldcon usually I don't uh, usually the author is just like swab they. Um, the program, programming, pack them in with all the, all the you know the schedules. Like Bob Silverberg, I asked him multiple times, and he's like, "I would love to, Richard, but I can't because, uh, you know, he 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 did not have the time." So, um, but anyway, um, the uh, the project itself is uh, there is uh, also inspiration by. Uh, Two books called Faces of Science Fiction and Faces of Fantasy, taken by Patty uh, Perret. In, um, let's see, I think the book was published in 2000, no, 1998 or so. So you can see that I purchased a book <laughs> from Amazon. You can still get it. Uh, highly recommend this. Uh, they are black and white photos. Different focus from my 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 work, but you know, still really good. That's Neil Gaiman at the cover of the Faces of Fantasy, and I forgot who this one is. Can tell. So, um, first photo of project. Uh, some of you local to Bay Area probably know Wanda, and uh, she wrote an episode of Star Trek uh, Next Gen, season three. She said, you know, she was uh, watching uh, uh, Next Gen and she was like, wow, I could do better than this. <laughs> so so uh, she submitted a, 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 um, a draft and it was accepted. Um, I'm pretty sure the title of the episode is uh, Metal Honor. So let me check. Uh, that's a chat window. Let me check. Okay. When was that book published? Um, uh, Bruce, uh, uh, let me know which book you're referring to. A um, wonderful thing about um, um, photographing the author is 
I photographed Sarah in 20, 2005. I mean, 2015. Time makes uh, no, 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 no meaning, has no meaning anymore, especially because of a pandemic. Anyway, it's 2015, not 2005. Uh, and um, uh, since then, uh, and she, she had not won any award at that time. Uh, but since then, she has won a number of Hugo's and Nebula's awards. So it's just really wonderful to to uh, see, you know, well-deserving authors getting their their recognition. The other thing I like to do when I photograph, especially the authors, is uh, I like to bring in their spouses. Uh, in fact, Gay, uh, this is Gay and Joe Holderman, the author of the uh, Forever War and a number of other books. First of all, they're just amazingly nice people. Uh, you know, when, when we see them at conventions, special work on, um, obviously don't bother them if they're eating or otherwise engaged or whatever. Um, and they're just very busy. So if you see them walking from from room to room, chances are they're rushing to make it to the next uh, next presentation. So, but if you happen to find them at a uh, less busy time, Joe and Gay are just amazing, wonderful people. And I love to photograph um, uh, spousal units, as my wife calls them, um, because I think it really bring out the personality of the person. Um, that's always love in their eyes, so to speak. So also in 2018, for WorldCon in San Jose, I just did an art blur book. Um, and you can see, you know, the the cover is basically the Lightroom uh, catalog of, of the photos. High quality book coming again. Let's uh, interject with a little bit about the uh, camera that I use. It's a four by five. Uh, it's the camera itself um, had not changed for a hundred years so, uh, or more in terms of how it worked. Basically, there's a front standard that holds a lens. And then there's a back standard, rear standard, that, hold, uh, that holds the ground glass or the film. And there's a uh, bellow. Uh, the bellow is light tight, otherwise, <laughs> otherwise your film uh, will be exposed. <laughs> and you focus by basically adjusting the length of the bellow. And usually there's some kind of rack and pinning or focusing knob to move the bellow band forth. Extremely simple in operation, but also extremely easy to get things wrong because basically you have to keep the shutter closed until you are ready to take the exposure. But then, uh, you know, when you take the exposure, you have to remove the, <laughs> the uh, dark slide holder, you have to trip the shutter. And if you are using flash, which I do a lot of times in the um, you know, portable studio format, Sometimes the flash does not work or whatever. It just thousand ways to get wrong. Well. This is for my blog. Um, I like to use uh, soft focus slash portrait lens. This is one of the more um, really soft focus lens uh, that I got. Um, the lens is made in 1920. Um, I just love the glow of the uh, highlight and, and the fuzzy edge type of thing. Uh, where's the the eyes are still uh, sharp. This particular lens is actually taking on an eight by 10 camera, which gives a negative uh, of eight inches by 10 inches, four times the size of, of the four by five, but it's uh, much more difficult to, to use than a four by five, much more than four, four times, more like 10 times or something, I don't know, whatever. Uh, but for the project, this will be distracting people will uh, tend to look at the quality of the equipment, so to speak, uh, the signature of the equipment rather than the photos. Um, this is one we, uh, when I begin and from time to time, I thought about doing collodion uh, web plate. Some people are doing that. And uh, maybe even for costuming, you know, for the uh, historical costuming from 1800s or whatever, that, that'd be real ideal. Uh, uh, but, I think doing things like that just, to me, it distracts from the focus of the project, which is the, you know, customers, 
the task doing or the authors. But for my personal work and I'm doing personal, other personal project, I love the self-focused look. So anyway, for this project, I uh, use a uh, Coke PS945, um, which carries the tradition of the portrait lens, or Coke lens, which, uh, which were originally made in the 1880s. Um, and you can see from, um, there's some, you know, compression artifact or whatever, but uh, this is a uh, uh, picture of uh, Chaplin uh, uh, at CC39. And, you know, you can see the transition from, of her costume from sharp to soft focus, just really gentle roll off uh, transition. Uh, when it needs to be bright and sharp, you know, like, like the color of, of the cape and the eyes, um, you know, they're sharp. That's 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 my main um, when I'm taking photos for this project. I focus on the eyes, and this is why they have to stand still because once I ask them, uh, once I focus on their eyes, I ask them not to move. So, and uh, just to continue a little bit, um, um, well, you know, I'm a what you may call a social justice warrior, and I just noticed that. I took some photos at Pemicon, the uh, NASFEC, uh, in July, this July. And uh, some, someone mentioned on one of the Facebook group, the JAF group, that uh, uh, special name like Pemicon and being held in Winnipeg, um, the con could have more representation from indigenous community. I couldn't you know, argue with that. But on the other hand, uh, you know, I took the camera across the border literally just <laughs> make that decision two days ago. And, you know, I took six uh, authors photo, three are POC, one is a first openly trans person, that one a Hugo. Uh, but uh, I do see more and more and more representation of minority groups in science fiction convention. And I hope to see more in, um, in uh, custom college as well. Uh, I think that is something that we, you know, the custom con runner and what, I know it's very difficult to run a custom con uh, or, or, or programming track for a war con, um, but it's definitely something that we could do better and we should strive to do better. And I hope my projects uh, contribute a little bit to the uh, inclusiveness effort. So, um, soon which this is Cheryl Morgan, those of you from the Bay Area may um, may know her. Uh, she used to live in the Bay Area, but you know um, she will not travel to U.S. because of uh, some of the anti-discriminatory laws in U.S. So we can do better. And let me uh, before I jump into other photos, uh, this is the third major portrait project I'm doing, Hearts on Our Sleeve, and in fact it's. Um, focus on trans people and um, what what we call the gender expansive community, non-binary, et cetera. Um, I took this on June 12th. Uh, Lance and I, Lance is local and many of you know, know uh, him or also. But anyway, we set up to take photo on June 12th and who knew the uh, you know, uh, midnight, um, just 12 hours before then, you know, there was a Orlando light nightclub shooting. So um, I think um, I, I would very much like to continue with this project, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I haven't taken as many photos as I would like for this project yet. Okay, uh, let's see, books, talk about the high quality books. So you basically have two options when you want to make a book. You do a print on demand, like blur.com or Amazon, I think offer um, print on demand. The quality is okay. Um, in fact, uh, uh, in 2020s, if you just take uh, images to a commercial printer, just your local, you know, um, uh, printer that had uh, relatively high end equipment, you could get really good quality catalog prints. Uh, much better, much better than some of the uh, photo books from older days, from the you know sixty or seventy. 
I think there was a significant increase in uh, photo book quality in, starting in the 90s. And uh, anyway, so book print on demand is, is good, um, but the, um, you, the, the size choices are very limited um, and it's expensive to produce. Um, if I make a, um, you know, 120 photos book, I will have to charge something like 70, 80 bucks soft cover. And I don't think I would make more than like five bucks um, per book. Um, so uh, that's kind of non-starter in that sense for me. So uh, traditional printing jobs, uh, great quality, especially if you work with the uh, printing printers. Um, but it costs a lot of money. Um, a soft cover book of, let's say, um, 120 pages. Uh, traditional would be, you know, $40, $50 per book. And you have to pay up front. So what, what you end up with is basically $30,000, $40,000 worth of uh, boxes of books in your garage for years. Um, and the economy of scale definitely help, uh, definitely works here. So it's best if you print a thousand books, but for projects like this, you may, you know, you may start with 500, but then 500, uh, the cost is significantly higher. So it's, it's a really tough, uh, tough problems for photographers. Um, but uh, fortunately, since um, I would say around 2010 or so, the printing shops in uh, China, um, the quality has gotten significantly better um, and the cost is much lower. Um, it, the problem is, of course, there's a language issue and just how to contact them. So fortunately, I found a way to work with the uh, uh, Chinese printer. Um, it's much more affordable than the, uh, the, the gold standard of printing for photo book is uh, Italian printing shops. Um, but the um, basically the Chinese printer, I could get it for one third to maybe even one fourth the price. So that's definitely a lot more affordable. Uh, but we'll see how it goes because um, I, I will do a Kickstarter slash GoFundMe also to gauge the interest. So if there's a lot of interest, um, I may print thousand and just <laughs> have garage space for the books. Uh, but if the uh, interest is more tippet, uh, I will you know print 500. We'll see. Um, the book will be relatively large, 10 by 12. Um, I would like to print them even larger um, because the uh, I think um, you deserve to see the quality of the last format um, you know, images. Um, but uh, 10 by 12 seems to be a good compromise between quality and cost. Uh, there will be two versions. The trade publication will be soft cover. And I don't know the the final price, yes, but I'll try to keep it around 40 to 50. I think that's kind of like a sweet uh, spot for, for people to pay. Um, and then I will make a collector's edition with, uh, you know, hard covers, maybe slip case and a special, uh, you know, handmade print or whatever. So we'll see how it goes. Um, there's some, <laughs> let's see, I, I think I mentioned it. So major challenge in making the book. Money and time, the rest is easy. So um, I have a day job. In fact, one and a half day job. Uh, if you know me, you know what I mean. Um, back in 2019, I finally had to get a real day job instead of working for our own small, tiny company, which wasn't making it. Um, and then I have, you know, project uh, in addition, in addition to uh, photography, um, I do calligraphy for art, and uh, I actually just start teaching Tai Chi, um, which doesn't take too much time, at least the Tai Chi, but uh, calligraphy is something I like to also do. Anyway, so there's some delay with the book. Um, 
I have, um, I will talk more about some, uh, some of the remaining work done, but I'm aiming for the World Builders book to come out in mid 2024, hopefully before the Glasgow Worldcon. And I have no idea what that means. I'm, I'm not sure about shipping books to, to Scotland, but we'll see. It would be good to have it by then anyway. Uh, also, maybe hopefully by Nebula, which usually is held in uh, May. So for the Love of the Art project, um, I have to finish the World Builders book first. So, you know, unless, uh, unless I have a lot of time in 2024, let's be a little bit more realistic and uh, aim for the target publishing day in 2025. Um, and then for the Love of the Art, I really don't get I don't have a sense of how to do the layout yet you know with the uh, world builders the left page uh contribution from the from the um, authors and artists themselves and the right page is the right hand sides are the photos so if you have any suggestion on the um for the love of the art book uh, let me know um Maybe I'll ask you guys to uh, write about a costume or whatever. Um, it has to have general interest. Um, so maybe maybe I will do similar thing as the costume makers art. I don't know. Anyway, challenges. Money and time, like I said. The other thing is the images has to be consistent in color theme. So that's I'm um, hoping my wife will help out. Uh, and uh, also get the subject to contribute with uh, submission. So uh, for Nebula and uh, Pemicon, I did a preview. This is uh, just done in a local printer shop. Um, this is probably the, the, the image on the lower right is probably close to the design of the uh, book cover, final book cover. And you notice it will say volume one because I have enough material to probably do two volumes already. And I will continue the projects. And uh, and it would be the same with the uh, Love of the Art uh, project. Um, I, I, you know, this is just um, labor of love and, you know, I'll do them as long as I enjoy them. And right now I enjoy them a lot. So, um, okay, so next I was going to show some pictures and then people can ask questions. But uh, before I do that, um, are there any pending questions? What, let's see. Bruce Mai was asking about the options for print on demand, but I think you covered that in one of your slides. Yes, so blur.com and uh, um, what's the other one? Lulu.com are the two big ones for independent. And Amazon also does uh, print on demand if you publish your book through them. And those are excellent uh, for photo and also for text. Um, if you're writing a novel or nonfiction or whatever. Um, yeah. Okay, so, all right. So are there other questions? Um, um, would uh, Kathy and Phil would it be okay if people just turn on the microphone and ask questions? Sure, go ahead. Yeah, so anyone with questions, go ahead and ask. Um, I'm going to start showing some images and let's hope this works. Yes, it does. Um, how come please identify yourself for the recording also? Yeah. So uh, yeah, she won a Hugo as an editor, I think 2017 or so. Um, Larry Niffin, uh, he was really gracious to be one of the first you know, big name author to participate in the project. Um, for this project, you know, the first year or two is, is really difficult. <laughs> a lot of author, uh, are like, you know, who are you type of thing. So having people like Larry, Helping out really helps. Um, Lauren Strong, he's um, he's actually uh, uh, 
uh, fluent in Klingon, but he doesn't costume as Klingon. <laughs> but you guys may have seen him work on doing Klingon uh, panels. Uh, Zizin Leo, uh, he's the uh, author for the three body, three bodies problem from uh, he's from China, uh, and uh, also making uh, one of his books were made into the movie Wandering Earth, which is actually a pretty good movie. Uh, Ursula. Ursula is funny. I took this photo in 2015 at Discon uh, DC. Uh, T.K. Fish Fisher won the uh, award and and uh, they gave a uh, excellent uh, acceptance speech about Slimo. Um, but, you know, they are mask. And that's this big, tall person on, on stage uh, wearing your... Uh, High heel boots or something, and you know, and and hat. So during the during the afterward, I, I went up to King King Fisher. I said, "I love for you to to <laughs> to participate in my project," and and uh, and T K Fisher is of course uh, Ursula, and she's like, "Richard, you took my photos already." <laughs> so, um, this. She, um, if you could find it, uh, uh, Ursula is an excellent speaker. She won a Hugo also back in 2011 at renovation uh, from her comic book work, uh, uh, Dag uh, Diggers. And um, if you could find a recording, acceptance speech recording, it's, it's just excellent. She was really funny. Um, author Sarah, I show her already. Uh, Russell Davis, he was actually a CIFA president. Um, Esther Freshner, we knew her from uh, Lunacon and whatnot from uh, when we used to live in uh, Boston. Nancy, um, Aliette de Baudrois, she's um, French, um, well, French, I guess, uh, Vietnamese French. Um, um, Excellent writing, but also I just love, she got some really excellent artists to do her book cover. You you, you should just uh, search for her books, just to look at the co book cover, if nothing else. Just amazing artwork. Um, Michael Swanwick. And um, Laurie, um, she's a photographer herself. She used a uh, cell jewelry that she make at work on. But she published uh, a book, a, a, a couple books. She was actually uh, had a uh, photograph exhibit at the um, Japanese World Con in 2007. And she had a couple books, black and white photo. Um, uh, honey, can you remind me what the name is? Anyway, hopefully my wife will speak up. <laughs> uh, can you? Um, he won um, Phil Hugo, and uh, he also translated uh, some of the season Neil's uh, work. Um, an artist, guess or honor, I think at the book that uh, Laurie uh, Edison. Um, anyway, John Picasso. Ex that just all these wonderful people. At one point, I mentioned that you know the people that photograph for the project tend to be like, you know, we're nice folks. And I forgot who mentioned maybe John O'Haron or something said something about this guy's self selection process. Um, nice, <laughs> nice people are the one that tend to agree to do the project. So, <laughs> um, Stephen Barnes, uh, Kaya Folio. Um, they took themselves out of uh, um, the Hugo because they won so many times. Yeah. So, uh, Chris Garcia, I think she, I think he's the only one whose nomination speech was nominated. I mean, uh, the acceptance speech was nominated nominated for the for the Hugo in the following year. So again, if you had not watched his seven speech, um, I think 20, I forgot what year, but um, it's renovation, so it's 2011. Um, 
anyway, um, definitely worth it. He's he's a great guy. Many of you know him. Um, Michael Resnick. Um, there's some really young authors. Um, Alyssa, you know, is one of them. Uh, her writing is really good. She tends to write short story, and um, you can find some of them on the website. Um, the thing though is, Alyssa write really dark <laughs> story. So it's like, oh boy, <laughs> how do you, how do you get the ideas? Um, CJ Cherry, Alyssa Countess, someone you know know her. She she's a princess. <laughs> And uh, Ra Mary Robinette Cow, this photo uh, file will be using for a book cover. She's a master puppeteer until she hurts her arm, her shoulder, and uh, then she becomes a full time writer. Um, wonderful person. Um, she was a con chair for DC, step stepping in at the last moment, and ho also helped out with the San Jose. Uh, program. So then they'll say work on programming. Um Lynn Thomas. Lynn Maria Thomas. I should fix that. She Lynn is a <laughs> couple of times when she's at the Hugo's, she's she's like one of the best dress or something. Uh, one time when she was walking up, someone said best dress. Uh Liz. Scalzi and Christine. Chrissy. I think Chrissy is actually a musician. But I just love this photo. I say I love Cabo's photos. Uh, Jane uh, Fancher, the partner, she's a she's the partner of CJ Cherry. Uh, Charles. New Clark, um, he's the editor of uh, Clark's World. Um, and, um, you know, I don't want to sidetrack into the topic of AI, but he's one of the first uh, publisher to take a stand against uh, AI submission. Naomi, finally, um, Tina, if you don't follow Tina on Facebook, you should, or actually she hasn't done it. For a while, but she used to post. Uh, you know, she had two kids, and they say the Donna's thing. They're <laughs> super, super funny, super smart kid. So, Kelly, Kelly, and uh, her wife, Alex, uh, Henry, Michael Bishop. He's also in the uh, Faces of Science Fiction book. Unfortunately, he passed away. Um, just a few months ago, so. Elizabeth, Cecilia Tang, Technical. Um, there's some light leak, but I'm gonna just go with it. Um, she's, she's wonderful. Um, amazing artist. Um, you should definitely check out her uh, artwork. Uh, Larry Dixon. Uh, Mercedes, Larry uh, is married to Mercedes, so, and they were the, uh, Mercedes were the, um, awarded the, the Grandmaster um, Award in CIFR last year, I think, either last year or the year before. So, Lee Moyer, this is taking a convolution. <laughs> uh, for those of us who remember convolution, David Gerald, wonderful guy. He's moving to Vermont and uh, could use some help. So buy his books. Uh, he's of, of course the author of the uh, Trouble with Tribbles and many other wonderful books, Martian Child and all that. Uh, and he's uh, Larry and Mercedes. They were the guests of honor at New Zealand WorldCon, which of course, unfortunately, had to change to virtual only. Um, Teresa and Patrick, editor. Benford, um, this was taking you know, at Lost Con. I, I didn't have a room or anything, but I do have the light. 
So and this law's gone being held in um, you know Thanksgiving by six o'clock. It's all dark already, and I'm like, well, I'm not gonna see him all that much. So and he said yes to the to a photo. So I set up a light in the in the Marriott courtyard, and uh, this is one of the thing that uh, that need quite quite a lot of Photoshop to bring out the best. Um, didn't change anything per se, but just need a lot of Photoshop to get the colors and the lighting and uh, you know details correct. Barbara Hambly, she also cosplay custom, as you can see. Uh, she's an author. Stephen Gold. Uh, she, I took this photo. I forgot which uh, nebula. And uh, again, just a side story about, you know, um, our, our, some of our weird policy, U.S. policy. Uh, she is Canadian, but as you can, you can tell, her name is Elma Tha. And she actually had a problem crossing the border during that year because of the, uh, because of her last name, literally. Um, I don't think you could, you know, tell that she could be from, uh, I think she's Egyptian descent. I could be wrong there. But anyway, um, I don't, I, you know, I don't think you could tell just by looking at her, but uh, just because her name, um, they uh, gave her a lot of trouble and and, and uh, she almost didn't come. Um, she won a never that year, so it was good that she did. Uh, I think she's also being nominated for Hugo this year. Yeah, I'm sure she is. She she co-written a an uh, a book with an author I forgot the name Sally. She's also a photographer. So uh, Elizabeth also taking a convolution. And uh, if you get if you watch uh, a soccer Mandalorian and uh, did she do and uh, probably and all the, all the new uh, Star Wars. Uh, series, TV series. Um, chances are Shauna is, is the uh, costume designer, the head cut. So she got a a uh, full screen <laughs> at the end curtain there. And that's uh, her daughter, uh, Sarah. This was taken in 2017 and Sarah is now like as tall as her mom, maybe even taller. And, Sarah, <laughs> and Shauna is already very tall. So Peter Beagle, um, this was taken at the uh, Warcon. Um, Harry Turtle Dove and uh, Laura Fankos. Jack McDevitt. I don't read, I uh, I don't have time, whole lot of time to read. And uh, even earlier, um, I, I didn't have much time to read, but Jack's books I really enjoyed because once again, it's, a lot of plot twist and big science uh, concept. So we really enjoy them. So it was really nice for me to uh, to have met him. Uh, again, Joe and Gay, wonderful people. Uh, Liz, she's an editor. And Chas, she, uh, he's local in Sunnyvale. Rachel. Um, uh, this, uh, Beth, Sarah Beth. Yes, I think so. And Andy Duncan. Bonnie. She writes, uh, lesbian vampire <laughs> novels. Uh, Curses Chan. He used to live in the Bay Area, I believe, but now he lives in uh, Portland, full-time writer. There with Lafine. This is actually the second photo. The first photo I took, the first set of photo I took of David, they, they were pretty good and I would include them. But then uh, he won a uh, award at the Nebula in 2017. So I, I love this photo. Jane Yolen. Not sure which one I like better yet. So we'll see. Uh, Jody. Um, Kate is, um, if you don't go to Nebula, you may not know Kate, but she's uh, the operation manager at Sephora. She's definitely helped me out a lot. 
um, lines. SB, um, she was nominated for Hugo this year, but she withdraw. She withdrew her nomination um, um, due to her, you know, um, disagreement with where the venue is is being held. And I respect her decision for that. That was, um, I forgot her name, <laughs> Frey. <laughs> um, Wanda. And Alyssa again, Joe again, Phil Folio, come as a pair to, to um, Kaya. So one thing I try do try to do is to take picture of um, um, you know as I mentioned before people of color and other uh, because representation really matter. Um, but I'm really happy that I also get people like you know Connie Willis. Um, her daughter is a friend of a lot of us. <laughs> um, look, Tamara. Um, my daughter and wife are a big fan of hers. So, and sometimes I, you know, have fun with photos. So Eva, I took photo of her 2016. And I think, uh, okay, it will show up later. Uh, Raga J, um, she unfortunately passed away uh, earlier this year, a few months ago. Kevin Anderson, um, Elsa, she's a, a advocate for a lot of uh, you know disability people with disability, uh, special in general. Mister and Missus Bear, um, as we know, uh, Greg died earlier this year. He actually uh, co-founded Comic Con. Uh, but mainly as a comic convention. And uh, they were also involved in um, Custom Con 1 or 2, et cetera, type of thing. So in fact, one of the contributions I got from from Astrid is his drawing of the uh, Custom Con 2, I think, logo. Yeah, this is the other photo of Eva. So I took a you know earlier photo of Eva. And then uh, in uh, 2019, when I was taking a photo again, she was like, can we try something fun? So we did. Um, Shauna again. I don't, some, some, I'm not, I have no idea why the order is the way it is. It's mostly, uh, you know, time of the photo, but not 100%. Um, Alan, um, I, don't usually see her at the uh, Worldcon or Nebula. So, but I, uh, you know, I knew of her since uh, living in Boston and I attended one of her reading at ReaderCons and I always wanted to get get her in, as, as part of the project. So it was great that she was in uh, um, DC at uh, this con. So it's one of those things she was signed books and I kind of like walk up to her and say, hi, Ellen. Do you mind to be in my project? And she said yes. And uh, her wife, uh, uh, Delia, is also a writer. Randy Dawn. So, art is a dirty job, but somebody got to do it. Totally agree. Um, Keith. And uh, yeah, this is one of the <laughs> Lynn, Lynn's uh, Hugo dress. She's is I think this is like midnight at uh, DC, so she's turning into a pumpkin. Um, they are the um, editor and writer for the Fiverr, I think, um, journal. Oh, I don't know what happened there. Martha Wells, uh, the famous uh, murder bot books and series. Uh, Sarah, I'm sure. Number of us know her. Uh, and Lucky. And this is the other photo I took during that uh, night at Lost Con. 
Tim Powell's. And this one, I gave up on it um, because it was just badly exposed or something because it was dark and the color is all wonky. Uh, but uh, I use a scanning software and um, they upgrade, they release an update, you know, last year or whatever. And I tried it and I'm like, oh my God, it rescued the color so well that I could make this for photo work. Um, the astronaut with the tiny Hugo. This tiny Hugo went up to space. <laughs> um, Corey, Dr. O, Rebecca Wong Horse. This two wrote the uh, screenplay for uh, Into the Spider-Verse, or uh, the, the first uh, Spider-Verse movie. Uh, Anna Raviv. Ada Palmer. She, she looked at the print and said, oh, this is the best photo of me. I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> David Brin. Oh, this. Tamara again, Katan. Most of us know him also. Meg. Uh, he's holding the page from the Faces of Science Fiction. And David Gerald again, James Began, Shauna, who's who lives in the Bay Area for years, but now she's in the Pacific Northwest. Um, Vince, Tanya. This actually was not taken on a four by five because I didn't bring my four by five at Lost Con last year. I'm like, I'm, no one is going to show up. <laughs> but so uh, so I uh, you know so I I I have a uh, good digital camera so I like, let's try anyway. Um, and this year finally got Bob and um, Karen Silverberg uh, at um, at the Nebula. So I talked to uh, Jeff Jeffy Kennedy before, and she wanted a uh, uh, you know. Uh, photograph of the current and past presidents of CIFA. So, and uh, Bob is, is one of the past presidents. And so I asked Jeff, I'm like, would you mind if I take five minutes before to uh, and get Bob to, to pose for my project? And I talked to Karen beforehand about that too. So, so finally, after 10 years, I think, because I asked him, at renovation 2011 and, and he's like oh yeah i'd love to no so sorry uh i didn't start a project until 2015 so but i'm sure i asked him in one of the earlier years and he's like we'd love to but sorry too busy so i'm glad to get a photo of him finally uh k tempest she won a i guess it's not a nebula, but the Andre Norton Young Adult Book. Uh, Scott, I'm sure a lot of them, a lot of you know him. If you go to work on or the nebula, he he's always dressed. He's like six foot four, six or whatever. Um, and he brings donuts. He'll walk three to five miles back and forth to get donuts and, and share with people. So Cheryl Morgan. This, the rest is from uh, Pemigan, uh, Christine. This is, uh, Pemigan is in fact the first convention Mark attended. So hopefully we give them a good impression. And Nishi. Robert Sawyer, he's one of the guests of honor and uh, Shandu, a Canadian author. And then uh, I finally got in a photo of Tanya on the four by five. I'm not sure which one I want. Uh, I'm sure I will talk to my wife and some of you to get some recommendation. And that's it for the world builders. Any any question for now before I share the other thing? Okay, seeing the Teddy Tubby, right? So I'll go do this fast, but uh, one thing you notice is uh, the 
the color is not as consistent because uh, usually when I exhibit the prints, it's the World Builders Project. So as I have spent a bit more time, but uh, even there, um, before we put in a book, uh, we have to fix the, uh, make the color grading more consistent. So, so I'm gonna just rip through this um, Teletubby zombie. <laughs> um, this is from, uh, oh, sorry, you have to turn your head. This is from the Attack on Titan cosplay. Um, the Red Sith. Some of the people you may know from the Bay Area customer community, Chris and Chris, Lisa Ashton, um, and Pierre and Sandy. I need to take better photo of them. Actually, I do have better ones. This one is actually out of focus. You may not be able to tell <laughs> on small screen. Um, my I'm blanking out. Um, Ray Bradbury, again. Uh, this is one of few um, people of color cosplay customer uh, in custom con. We got to do it better, definitely. Uh, lovely dress. She's local to Charleston. Nora. Uh, Gypsy. This is just wonderful. I, f we, I, should, I need to ask her again, but I, I forgot how she did the painting. I think she painted on the wing after she put the wings together. Um, this is from Fenome. You may have seen this in uh, Kansas City. This is one of those that uh, looks great uh, in presentation. Um, as a print, it's, it's, it, it doesn't work as well. So we'll see. Um, some cling on. Fanson. This is from uh, Canada. I was invited to um, as a guest at um, Anime North one year, 2018, I think. Unfortunately, I think the uh, that's almost all the photos are not really usable for large print. They may be usable for um, for the book. This is our daughter and uh, one of our dogs. Um, or cosplay. Um, we watched this uh, girl's woman, young woman now, basically grew up in the anime LA uh, masquerade. Uh, Mortafina. Stacia. Oh, Shaq. Um, and of course, uh, Matt and Brian. Sean Elizabeth. This are the uh, Attack on Titan cosplayer. Um, this is nominally the you know our custom clothing, but you know, they're a lot later. <laughs> Again. And here's Phil. <laughs> We we spent forever to try to get the colors more or less correct. Um, Phil ended up sending me a patch of the uh, uh, color film don't react the same way as human eyes. And uh, and also because I use flash, which pick up different colors and then sc scanning software also pick up different color. So I think I got it mostly okay. We'll see. Uh, lastly, Kathy again, and um, Karen. This probably will be the cover for the Love of the Art book. I took photo of her. I saw it, uh, you know, in costume in CC33, and I said, let me photograph that. And she said, no, 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 wait until later when I put on the Black Queen. That's just awesome. Anyway, um, morale, she's amazing, customer. This is Travis and his mom. More cosplayer. She's cosplaying a, let's see if I get it straight, a man playing a character of a woman. 
this is from a uh, from a video game the he often met the uh, one of the game designer and he was so impressed he signed uh, signed the armor on the upper left Charlin and this is Gail you could not tell but that's Gail which is amazing Lisa and uh, Leslie Cat. Bethany again, Sunny Jim. She's the co-chair of the 2025 uh, WorldCon. You know. So, and I think that may be it. Jackie was the last. And 2.29, we have one minute. Any, <laughs> any uh, questions, additional questions? Richard, can yes, you yes. talk a little? Sorry, can you talk oh. a little bit about the nomination process and and um, what nominees and and finalists uh, go through up to receiving the award or at least the award ceremony? Uh, you mean the Hugo, right? Yeah. So the nomination the nomination is is passed, but normally um, they open up the Hugo nomination usually around. December of the uh, of, of 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 the you know end of the year you know uh, prior to the to the World Con. and it's open to the you know the current past and I forgot whether the future World Con. so uh, basically at least two uh, members of two World Cons can nominate um, maybe three uh, and then the um, the uh, finalist, uh, basically, uh, and, and you could nominate up to five people in each category. You could leave some blank if you want. Um, and you could, you know, change your nomination uh, as uh, prior to the closing. Um, usually, the uh, we saw the finalist list is announced in April. I think this year there's some delay because of the logistic um, of, you know, the World Cup being held in China. The Hugo team is mostly, if I understand correctly, still run by most of the people that have been running Hugos for the last few years. Um, at least the, the, the nomination and the ballot counting, et cetera. I don't know who's going to run the, uh, you know, the Hugo ceremony on site. Um, but uh, and uh, uh, to vote on the actual award, uh, you know, the finalist, um, from the finalist, um, you have to be a member of Whispers of the current convention. So um, that's why you have to become a member for, the, for this year to vote in the Hugo. And uh, um, Shandu actually invited all the finalists to to um, to attend on site, some of the uh, you know uh, finalists are a team. You know, for example, the fanzine or or even uh, editors. Um, and I don't know for sure, but I think they may only invite one from each team type of thing. But I don't know for sure. Uh, so uh, some of you. <laughs> uh, some of you know I have some reservation uh, about attending um, in person, uh, but I might uh, go uh, because it's an opportunity for me uh, to photograph uh, some of the Chinese um, um, authors. Um, and you know, this is part of the only opportunities unless I go to China again type of thing. So um, I'm seriously considering it and I will, um, you know, that you guys know type of thing. Any other questions? All right, if not, uh, thank you very much. Uh, as I said, I will send the uh, um, slide presentation to Phil and he could incorporate into the materials for the webinar. I probably will not include uh, you know, the photos I show at the end. I need to fix them up. I'm not happy with some of the colors, so. Uh, want, want to be the best. 
to show to everyone. But it will be they will be on my uh, website. All right. Thanks, Thank Richard. you very much. Thanks. And stay tuned for our next webinar, which will be on October 8th. And it'll be on beetle wing embellishment with Leah Baum. So the announcements for that are out. Um, free, feel free to share the link. Um, they're out on Facebook. Uh, they went out to ICG, a bunch of places like that. So um, if you haven't seen the announcement and wanted a, an invitation or a link to get there, please send me email at philgust at siweb.costum.org. And I'll be happy to share that with you. So again, thanks, Richard. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Have a good day, you guys.